Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the heater assembly on your dryer. It's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a number two Phillips screwdriver and maybe a pair of needle nose pliers. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the dryer. So simply unplug it. And next you will need some access to the back, so you may need to pull your dryer forward and be careful not to damage the vent. So our first step will be to remove the main top. There are three screws that are located underneath the lip at the back. We'll just need to remove those. So first of all, we need to remove the main top. It's held in place with three screws located across the back. Underneath that lip, I'll simply remove those. Now once we remove the three retaining screws at the back of the main top, we can then just pull it back a little bit. And then lift it off of the cabinet. Now with the main top removed, our next step will be to remove the control panel or console. And it's held to the machine with two screws, one on either side. We'll remove those first. These screws are a little bit different than the remainder of the screws that we'll be taking out, so keep them separate. Well, next, we'll release the wire harness from this connector on the top of the bulkhead. separate those and pull it out through. And then across the back of that control panel housing, there are three or four little tabs that clip onto the metal bracket. So we'll need to pry up with our hands on those and pull back. pull forward until you release them. There are also a couple of tabs on the bottom. You need to just shift that slightly, lift up on it, and then pull it out. Now to do this repair, we also suggest that you remove this mounting panel on the front here. It's held in place with one screw on either side and then a short one down through the top on either side. So we'll go ahead and remove those next. These screws are a little shorter than the rest of the mounting screws. So keep them separate. Now before we can remove the control panel mounting bracket, we need to remove four screws across the top of the front panel. So with the control panel tilted down out of the way, just remove two on the right hand side. You will have to hold the control panel just to the side enough to remove that screw. And then we're holding the control panel out of the way. We can remove the two on the left. Next, we'll remove the remaining two screws that secure that control panel mounting bracket to the cabinet. And there's two in the face, one on both sides. So pull the control panel away and remove the one on the left. Now next, we'll remove four more screws that secure the top of the front panel to that mounting bracket. We can now, while supporting that control panel, we'll tilt the top of the mounting bracket away from the cabinet. Just lift up slightly, pull it away. You will note that there's a hook on both sides of that control panel mounting bracket that fit into little vertical slots on the cabinet. 
With that released, we can then disconnect the door switch harness. Just reach down in through the top and pull the harness away from the switch. And set it completely off to the side. Now next we'll remove the front panel. To do so, we'll open the door up and we're going to remove two screws located down in the lint filter area. These two screws are specific to this location. Let's keep them separate. And as you remove the last screw, support that front panel so that it doesn't tilt forward on you. And then we can tilt that whole panel forward and lift it off of the base. There are two clips on the bottom that the holds the bottom of that front panel in place. We'll set that aside. Next we'll remove the harness to the light bulb. Simply unplug it. And then we're going to remove the bulkhead. On most models it's held in place with four screws, one through each of these tabs on the sides. And some models will have screws into the blower housing as well. So if your model has those, you'll need to remove those two screws. We'll also need to disconnect the sensor harness to the moisture sensor. So depress that locking tab and separate it. And then go ahead and remove these screws. Now we can lift that bulkhead away from the cabinet. Just lift up on it. There, each of these tabs has a little T-shaped hook on it. We need to disengage those from the cabinet. Lift up slightly on the drum and then pull that housing away. Now with the front bulkhead removed, we can set that aside. So our next step will be to remove the belt from the idler and motor pulleys. So we're going to reach in on the right hand side. You'll feel the belt as it comes down off the bottom of the drum and wraps around the idler pulley. So we in through from the left side and you'll feel that same idler pulley. So we're going to push the pulley bracket to the left and release the tension. Just roll the belt off of it. The belt is now free and we can lift the whole drum assembly out through the front. Use the belt to support the weight. And we can set that aside. Now to remove the element housing, we'll first begin by pulling the wires out of the harness holders on the bottom. Pull the white one from the rear holder. And one of the red ones from the front one. And next we'll remove both the yellow and blue wire from the terminals. As well as the red one on the rear. And next we'll remove these two screws. Then lift up on the front end of that heater housing so you disengage that hook on the mounting bracket. Let it drop down on the back so that that little slot in the back of the housing falls away from the tab on the outlet duct. And then we can remove the whole assembly and discard it. Now when installing the new assembly, first you should check the terminals, make sure there was no damage in shipping, make sure the wires are on there securely. And we'll begin by tucking that tail end of that heater housing into the outlet duct and engaging that slotted opening at the back. Make sure it fits in nice and snug. Then line up the front of the housing. And reinstall the two retaining screws. Next, we'll reconnect the wires to the element terminals. Make sure 
sure they're nice and snug. And if not, tighten the terminals with your needle nose pliers. Your model may not use this extra terminal on that rear thermostat, but that's okay. And then fit the wires into the harness retainers on the base. Make sure all of those are snug. And now we can start to reassemble the dryer. Using the belt to support the weight of the drum, we'll just lift the whole assembly into the dryer. And we'll fit the back of that drum onto the rear drum rollers. And again, just make sure that that belt is groove side against the drum. Next, we need to reinstall the belt onto the idler and motor pulleys. So we'll do that by reaching in on the right hand side and on the left side. Locate the belt, and again, feel to make sure that we have no twists in it and that we have the groove side facing the drum. Locate the idler pulley, and then we're going to tilt that idler pulley to the left. And we're going to bring the belt across the top of the idler pulley from the left side, across the top of the idler pulley, wrap it around it, back to the left, and then loop it over the motor pulley. So that will put the groove side of the belt into the motor pulley and the flat side of the belt onto the idler pulley. And then we're just going to rotate that drum a couple of rotations. We should see the blower wheel rotate at the same time. That will help center the belt on the drum. You just keep an eye on it, make sure that it stays with the groove side against the drum. Double check, make sure it stayed flat side on the idler pulley and groove side on the motor pulley. And now we can put the front bulkhead back on. Now when reinstalling the front bulkhead, we need to make sure that these little T-hooks properly engage the openings in the lip of the cabinet at the front. We also have to make sure that the drum sits firmly on the front drum rollers. So we'll lift up on the drum as we position the bulkhead. We need to make sure that that little T-shaped hook fits into that slotted opening. And this should drop down so that the screw holes line up. We'll then replace the four screws. Remember to reconnect the sensor wire to the harness and push it in far enough that you can hear the locking tab engage. And again, we should rotate that drum just to make sure that it's fitted firmly around the front of the drum and the felt is not bound up. Now we can go ahead and put the front panel back on. Now when installing the front panel, we want to make sure that we engage both of those tabs on the bottom of the frame with the slotted openings on the bottom of the front panel. Just tilt it into position. And while supporting it, we're going to open that door. And then we'll reinstall the two screws into the filter housing. Tighten those securely and then close the door up. Now next we'll reconnect the wire harness to the light bulb. Make sure it's firmly inserted. And then we'll pivot the mounting bracket and control panel housing 
down into position. Tuck the wire harness for the door switch out first. And then we need to position that mounting bracket in behind the lip of the front panel on both sides. And there are also a couple of hooks on the sides of that mounting bracket that will fit in the slotted openings on the cabinet on either side. Make sure they're properly engaged. And then we'll install the two screws through the top. Now the top screws are the two short ones. Tighten them both firmly. Now next we'll put the two side screws in for that mounting bracket. We need to lift the control housing temporarily out of the way. Next, the four screws across the top of the front panel. And again, you will need to Hold that control panel housing out of the way while you put two screws on the left side into position. Now with all the screws tightened securely, we next need to make sure that we reconnect the wire harness to the door switch. You'll note that there is a groove on one side of that connector that will face towards the drum. Make sure it's fully inserted into the door switch. And then we can reposition the control panel. As noted, there are a couple of tabs on the bottom that will fit into these slots on the top of the front panel. Now the easiest method to put that control panel back in position is to tilt it forward at the bottom, tuck the control panel into that opening, and then you can lift up, line up the slots on the bottom, make sure it's centered, and then we'll just squeeze the top of it together to engage the clips across the top. We'll install the two retaining screws from the mounting bracket into the control panel housing. We'll tuck the wire harness back into the retaining clips. Now we can put the main top on. When installing the main top, we want to make sure that we engage these two spots with the little plastic stubs that protrude from the top of the cabinet. So line it up side to side properly, set it back about an inch gap between the back of the control housing and the top and push it forward, and that should engage the top. Install the three retaining screws across the back. We're now ready to push the dryer back into position, reconnect the power, and our repair is complete.